word up my good people so uh here we have a video about about hippies <laughs> about about the purification of that uh, terminology and uh, integration of what it really means to to be someone that uh, feels like this and that heals like this with or with or slash and without the help of plant spirit medicines because uh this this is this is going to be very reminiscent of the 60s and this is a uh, what we're what we've been kind of uh experiencing with a reemergence of the hippie culture but it's a more direct and uh, refined version of that um so that you get down to the uh <laughs> what are the words? The the isness, the the quintessential essence of what is happening inside the body as we experience these things. Do we really need um, outside things whenever we are able to connect and engage on such a level that we have such a level of love and connectivity that that is um, going to be the ultimate high. So experiencing and engaging and cultivating an awareness of um, divine contemplation and uh, unification and love within this uh, imagination and imaginings of what you're creating, what you're realizing, what you're experiencing, that, that is uh, the ultimate cloud nine and you don't necessarily need anything to help you get there. I mean, we are we are all on our own paths, and we all have our own uh, blockages and things that obstruct and distract. And so, certain methods and modalities will speak to some of us more than others. And uh, some of us have uh, been through the gauntlet, have uh, have experienced. Uh, a great many different layers and levels of things and uh, ultimately we come to realize that you don't need anything to uh, help you get there because you are it so uh, you have to essentially come to realize how to get yourself there, how to always be there, how to navigate and translate and transmute, how to transport yourself in this, uh, have clarity with, with the translations of uh, the messages that's happening with body and mind, with spirit and soul and heart and engaging this in a pure sense and state not allowing the uh, false sense of self to get in the way and not allowing other people's ignorance and uh, bullshit scripts to have any kind of sway upon you and it's a process it is a process But the, but the hippie, the hippie, the essence of that is ultimately a, uh, a, a shaman. It's a shamanistic aspect in, uh, um, in relating with reality. Shamanistically transmuting the things inside of you. So that you can become more and more clear upon what is really real how to engage these things 
how to cultivate an awareness to where you see through all the fucking bullshit scripts. You don't you don't need uh, drugs or whatever. And if you choose to utilize them, you do so in a state where you know what you're doing. You're doing this for a specific reason, and it it's not controlling you. You're not living your life around the chemical or the drug or the state of beingness because you become that state of beingness. So oftentimes, people are um, initiated into certain states and they uh, they get addicted because this is uh, what we've been brought up into is an addiction of a certain mentality and so we seek things we are taught to seek things outside of ourselves when in reality the happening is occurring within every moment of your mentality every every little thought that you have every little feeling you have, uh, you are in control of this, whether you like it or not, whether you realize it or not, you are the conductor, the orchestrator of your emotions. You control your emotional state, and yes, it's very difficult at times whenever we're caught up in bullshit without, but whenever we come back inside, then we realize that all this stuff being manifested outside is just a reflection. It's just to show us and remind us of what's going on inside. The power that we really have to empower and create. Oh yeah, and this is my guy <laughs> I just did a video on Certified Health Nut. So uh This is this is the fucking dude right here. Tell me another person that is this guy's age and has this guy has this kind of vitality and uh acuity, uh mental sharpness and awareness. <laughs> this guy's legit as shit. And this is my dude. Is this the ancient art of Shabambu? So I drink my urine first thing in the morning. Wait, really? Yeah. I've been doing that for like 15 years. What? I knew that was sort of... <laughs> he says it's so fucking... Fucking nonchalant. Yeah, I practice the ancient art of Shabambu. Yeah, you what's up? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. By the way, if you don't know what if you don't know what Shivambu is, then uh, get a clue and, and get with it, or don't. But uh, if you do, you will be on a, a whole nother level of uh, what experiencing and living really is, and what experiencing self love really is. You will never experience self love until you experience. Shivambu takes it to a whole nother level. Thing, but I didn't expect to meet somebody who actually did it. When we think of the word hippie, we may conjure up images similar to what you see here. Many of us might imagine peace signs, long hair, tie-dye, woodstock, marijuana, psychedelics, and maybe even modern-day hippies rubbing crystals and meditating, or talking about astrology and pseudoscience topics. It's clear that the word hippie has evolved over time and has taken on different meanings throughout history. Although the word hippie may date back to the Jive era in the 1930s and 40s, the term was popularized mm. during the 
counterculture movement of the 60s and 70s, a time when the youth were seeking answers in a different way of life, participating in activism and exploring altered states of consciousness. It was a time of peace, love, drugs, and free expression. And now we see a resurgence of this movement with the New Age hippies. And after having spent some time with this community, I believe there's more to the surface level story and stereotype of the so-called hippie. We are totally generalizing. Absolutely. And, uh... This is uh, what I've been saying. This is this is what I've um, what I'm all about. Is that uh, we are we are transmuting the uh, mentalities in the scripts, the spells, and the spellings. We are flipping them upside down and inside out. So uh, new age is now becoming. The old age and when I say that I mean we are going back to our true roots so the hippie movement originally was a uh, resurgence to to seek um, what was lost to seek uh, the connection uh, with nature ultimately that we have been uh, led away from but uh, it got um, purposefully I may add it was purposefully made the scene and uh yeah i mean it was all fucking media dude like if you haven't realized yet like all your fucking reality is media if you uh are on the social webs or the interwebs the control structure as has gotten ahead of itself and uh, it's collapsing in upon itself now just like with the hippie movement now we are uh, accessing the culmination and the uh, precipice of this <laughs> so it's, it's more like a, a clarification a purification um, of where the integration is happening a realization of the connection that uh, is happening um, it, it's a uh, it's a refinement with you know we we, we had this level and layer of a uh, deep um, drug induced uh, chemical induced spirit plant spirit medicine induced uh, altered states and uh, that was hushed and quieted and now that's re-emerging in, in a pure form to where uh, more and more people are realizing that they can access these places without without having to take anything because they realize what's happening inside them they realize that they are the drug they are the chemical they are the spirit they are the everything they have access to the everything within them and they are taking time they are taking the energy and they are paying what what are they paying? They're not paying money. They're paying, well, maybe a little bit to have the experiences. But ultimately, they are paying attention to where these experiences are stemming from, which is within a deep level of gnosis and awareness that can be cultivated and engaged in every moment. Right now, I get there's a whole spectrum of individuals here, but I'm really fascinated by stereotypes because there's truth to them. There's a reason why stereotypes exist because that stereotype comes from something real. So when it comes to this hippie stereotype, oftentimes these 
these people are being brushed aside by mainstream society as being crazy or just too out there and are too woo-woo to actually have any real validity in what they're saying. But I think there's more to this. Out of everybody that I've encountered, it seems to me that these people are the happiest. And yep. isn't that what everyone wants, to be happy? And I really want to get to the bottom of why that is. I am here to get inside the brains and the hearts of these people and figure out how they're so damn happy. Are some <laughs> of them crazy? Are some of them genius? I don't know. We got to find out. So into the desert, here we go. Well, whenever you're insane, you access the genius within, the genius within us all. So, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna, like, how far I'm gonna go with this uh, in this video, but, uh, in this, uh, thing that she explores. There, there's not a lot of alcohol or drugs involved, is, is what they say. And yet they are accessing uh, places of uh, blissed out states. And it, it's interesting that this uh, kind of has to do a lot with yoga. Because of the Hindu and uh, Indian and uh, Krishna uh, states of beingness. And I've... Uh, I've attended a uh, Krishna ceremony where uh, they access uh, uh, blissed out states with, with uh, dancing and music, and uh, there's no drugs involved. And I, well, the dr you are the drug, so I mean there are drugs involved because you're you're um, heightening and enhancing and engaging, enlightening, enlivening the things inside of you. So you're getting yourself worked up, and that is the ultimate drug. You getting yourself worked up is the ultimate experience. But um, the the inner, what, what I experienced was the energy where that was being directed towards was uh, was outside. So they weren't a. Uh, experiencing what they were inside and just relish relishing in it and realizing that that was it they don't need to project that that energy in onto uh, idols which which at the time was uh statues which was just like what the fuck dude come on you're obviously accessing like certain ecstatic states but like you're projecting this outside of you like uh, it's just frustrating. Like even at the time, whenever I experienced that, I wasn't like uh, super educated, educated, or, or whatever. But I was still at the point where I was like, I meditated enough to uh, where I was like, bro, come on. So so whenever these uh, these people that have been there for a while, that have been uh, in the Krishna community for a while. I, I questioned them about meditation, about um, accessing different states, and uh, they they answered me with, "Yeah, we can go there, but like, why why would we?" And I was just like, "Okay, okay, dude, I'm out. <laughs> you have lost touch with your own inner state, and you." Uh, are projecting that outside of you and um, putting your praise and awareness to uh, onto other people, onto ideals and idols outside of you. And once you do that, you you lost track of what it's really about. And this is like uh, the essence of like the original hippie movement in that it kind of originally started with drugs and all that. Um, kind of stuff uh, induced states but uh e even in those induced states like they got it they understood where the connection was what it was all about so it's the media and the bullshit fucking scripts that ha have uh, placed its awareness and tricked people into thinking that the 
hippies of the 60s were about, you know, drugs and all of this. And they were just finding themselves. They were just you know, getting out of the fucking bullshit and, and getting into the self, the, the real, the direct experience. It, it doesn't, you don't have to do this with, with anything outside of you. And, in fact, the more you do that, the more it becomes a crutch and a trap and it entraps you and trains you into going outside to accessing what is within you always. <laughs> Bakshi. What you're seeing here is a yoga and music festival called Bhakti Fest. It yeah. takes place every year in the Joshua Tree Desert. The festival is on the smaller side with a tendon. And uh, from what I've heard of Joshua Tree, I've only ever heard awesome, awesome stuff about that. So this is something I would look to, uh, to for towards <laughs> to attend because uh, there's not who th th this is touching upon very very deep levels um, with music festivals and uh, taking drugs and chemicals um, the things that are um, allowed to come in through these heightened states so whenever um, you're you're accessing the bliss body without the aid of certain chemicals and plant spirit medicines you don't necessarily necessarily have to be on guard or have to worry about other energies and essence, essences coming in and that's that's kind of a deep topic it's kind of a, a whole nother level and layer of music festivals and the siphoning of energies within those. Um, just even within uh, any individual that is uh, getting loaded, as Terence McKenna would say, loaded or, or blasted away. Um, if you're not, if you're not able to do so in a state where you're, you feel secure and safe and you don't necessarily always need to feel safe, but at least in a place where you're at uh, in the onset, then uh, more than likely you're going to have um, an energy succubus or incubus like extract your experience and your memory as well. So this way, the cultivation of the Gnosis is of the utmost importance. It's ranging from several hundred to a few thousand people. And because of that, the community is quite tight-knit. And unlike other festivals of this kind, Bhakti Fest is drug and alcohol free. I highly doubt that. <laughs> but um, the further I went in with this, um, it did seem like um, the more people would say that there there is a very um, low amount of drugs or alcohol. So, um, ultimately, it, it's very much uh, accessing your own natural high. Getting high your own supply, which is the Wim Hof style. It's also quite affordable compared to other festivals, with tickets at around $250. The festival includes a multitude of yoga classes, meditation, breath work, lectures and workshops, free movement, ecstatic dance, music, and yoga teachings and practices of all types and lineages, but with a focus on the path of bhakti yoga. Bhakti means devotion in mm, Sanskrit mm. and originally comes from the Vedas, which date back thousands of years as one of the oldest written texts. Sanskrit. Bhakti yoga involves not only asanas, or the physical practice of yoga, but also singing ancient mantras, uh, typically in the form of something called kirtan, yes. which is a call and response style of music. 
where the community collectively sings these mantras. Bhakti yoga is practiced by all different people all over the world, and many types of people attend Bhakti Fest, but it does seem to attract a large amount of people you this might think of as... crazy fucking beautiful, and like I was saying, like, what these people are doing... Look at these people. Most of them have their eyes closed. They're moving and flowing and vibrating. They're singing and accessing their inner state and sharing that in a uh, ceremonial type state where everyone is accessing this. But the main focus is inside and, <laughs> well, it becomes outside because they go so in... This is why it's so beautiful. They go so inside that it becomes the community. And this is like the ultimate fucking healing that you could experience. Hippies. What is a hippie? A highly intelligent person pursuing inner enlightenment. How beautiful is that? Mic drop! Yeah. So I have been to Bhakti Fest once before and also Shakti Fest twice, which is a similar festival run by the Shakti! If I came to this festival, like, five years ago, I might have been afraid. I might have been like, what is this called? A lot of yeah. people just don't really even know what meditation is, what yoga is, and what they can do for them. They maybe have preconceived notions, and it comes from something that is based off maybe a fear or a ridicule. There's still a lot of questions. That was cool, because that's very important. Um, a fear. Or, it's not even a ridicule, it's a, it's a mentality of... Uh, what someone else has said, what someone else has uh, dictated about what um, a certain something is, so that you adopt that. But well, you have been taught to adopt ideologies and mentalities. So uh, now we are coming out of that phase of adoption, adopting realities. And we are coming into the direct experience. And this is the ultimate state of this because this is a like a celebration of the <laughs> ultimate experience of just accessing the natural high of communing with people and uh connecting and enlivening yourselves to get together. Uh, there, there really is nothing greater than this experience here. I don't know how deep we'll get into this video, but ultimately she ex uh, expresses this as well. That, uh... <laughs> no chemical or drug-induced or chemical uh, heightened or uh, plant induced state is going to come close to the state that happens whenever you experience a direct communion with love with uh, a community or with um, a group of people because the <laughs> it goes so beyond words and it goes so beyond anything it, it goes directly into the all into what the essential essence of what you are what we all are. And this is why, like, uh, music festivals and these things are so fucking beautiful. It's not because, <laughs> because of the, the drugs that you can access, you know. Uh, it, it's because of the community. The people there, the, the awareness and the vibrations, the emanations that are being reverberated and expressed and reflected and in kind to one another. The synchronicities and happenings that happen whenever we allow ourselves to feel on this deep level, that's whenever we really access the magic of reality and the flow. We access the flow state and things just happen. Since I have and even some skepticism around some of these teachings. So this weekend, I am seeking to really understand what's underneath it all. Vishrivas, <laughs> you've been involved in this community for 
quite a while. Since I was born. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How would you describe the Bhakti community? The Bhakti community is very diverse. You meet people mm. that are fascinating, unlike anywhere else I've yes. ever met on the planet. Joy Casey, the legend. The man Certified. Legend. Certified. 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 So tell me about your life. <laughs> You're fascinating. Oh, well, this moment to moment, but uh, I usually wake up and I hydrate and I drink my urine first thing in the morning. Wait, really? Yeah. Oh, hey. Uh. Shivambu. Look into this. Like, Don't take anyone's word for anything. Look into it for yourself. Shivambu. Look into people who have experienced it for themselves. Learn from them and then take it upon yourself to learn for yourself. So experience it for yourself. And then the things that these people are saying make a little bit more sense. You gain a little bit more clarity. It's been that for like 15 years. And there's other pro protocols for your therapy. It's like... Why? Uh, it has antibodies. Testosterone, HGH. <laughs> Why? Why would you recycle? Why would you loop your your inner states to really translate and transmute and migrate into a more refined mentality? Why? Do it. Do it for yourself. For an extended period of time. And uh, your fucking reality will change, no doubt. Amino acids, but I also use it topically. And there's, there's multiple other protocols. And for the topical, you want to use the aged. And uh, at first, with the internal, you want to use the fresh. And then, once your body is acclimated, you want to go ahead and go ahead and use the aged for uh, nasal cleansing for uh, for even in the eyes and uh, you can use it for the enemas as well but at first you want to start out with the fresh because the fresh is going to have a certain level of surface level of cleansing and then the age is going to really get in there and get into some deep level cleansing it's not, it's not, yeah, I do. It makes me feel good. Exactly. Aged urine enemas, which is a whole other level of shvama. Yes. I've got these parasites out of my body that I've never seen. This Thank is you. A Thank you. This is nutrition and fasting. Look at this motherfucker's body, dude. How old do you think this guy is? He has his uh, hairs. <laughs> his heirs. Maybe, uh... Actually, no, really. Like... I know people who uh, are almost twice as young as this guy who have have a lot more gray and white hairs. And nowhere near the physicality of this guy. Well, I mean, I do some gym, but I, I don't... Uh, over strain my body exactly. 53 I do more Qigong and so I'm 53 yeah, <laughs> <laughs> 53 and he's uh, <laughs> more active and aware and <laughs> limber than uh, most everyone at uh, whatever whatever fucking age you want to throw out. <laughs> so this is what happens whenever you hit your... Look at that. He has his fucking soles on the soil. His bare feet on the ground. He's in a horse stance. He's flowing. He's engaging. He's breathing. He's accessing the prana. He's engaging his own systems. Uh, the cistern inside of his own body, he's allowing his body to reintegrate and to translate, transmute, to tell the body on, on the intelligence level of the body what I am going through right now. And this is the beauty of the Oren therapy. You, your body 
is uh, allowed to feel what it needs in the moment. You're, you're kind of telling your body, I'm accessing this deeper layer of healing and feeling. So allow me to allow you, to allow everyone, to allow all of us to feel what needs to be healed. And this is the true beauty of Orin. You experience as within, so without, like you have never experienced before when you start to get into Orin therapy. Don't take my word for anything. Do this shit for yourself. Right, it's all connected through your groin. I want to reach Taint. guys my age and younger and show them what's possible. 70% of the American people are obese or overweight right now. How do we expect the His world age. to be His age. His <laughs> age. Nah. Not until more people catch on. The people younger. That's the people that are really going to start to like, realize, oh shit, there's people like this at 53 doing this shit and I'm not anywhere close to this shit. Uh, what the fuck are you on about then? You need to get your shit together if you're not you, any, anywhere close to this. Because this guy's 53 and is kicking your fucking ass, dude. So they start to get real and get into the feel, get into the fucking healing process. How do you do this? You fucking integrate, you fucking get real, you get your fucking bare feet on the ground, you get as much skin as you can on into the sun. Allow the sun to shine where the quote unquote sun doesn't shine. Get the sun in every fucking piece of your skin. Meditate in the sun and in the nature just just by yourself. Just alone. Spend time alone in isolated places. Whether it's in nature or wherever it's at. Spend time alone in quietude, in the solitude, in the silence. Engage the silence. And within that you will experience monad hmm. not healthy ourselves once you wake up and take care of your animal you realize you are responsible for the sum total of your reality and then you do something about it you don't wait for the politicians exactly. to complain or other people you create the vision that you wish to see. And my mission is to raise human consciousness and change all systems on the planet. My vision is clean air, water, soil, <laughs> equitable systems for all mankind in my lifetime. Do you consider yourself a hippie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It feels great. The thing is, I like to upgrade the hippie consciousness. Not just exactly. Like, oh, live some community and take care of me and let me be a couch potato and hippie. Blah, blah, blah. I've yeah. heard it all. It's like, yo. Pony up. Be fucking responsible. Go through a rites of passage. Go through something difficult. Exactly. In your life. Contribute. That's what contributionism means. Not community. Take care of me. I'm a lazy fuck. Does that make sense? Dude, this guy's legit as shit. Oh my god. I feel like this guy is uh, more me than. Uh, uh, oh my gosh. Access what you need to access, feel what you need to feel, but then, like, deal with that shit, dude. Integrate. That's, that's how we fucking transmute and translate this shit into a higher perspective. Alright, people? Deal with it. Feel with it. Heal with it. Realize the things that we need to do. Internally and, and, and then collectively. This is probably where I'm going to end it here because I don't want to get it too long. But, uh, 
Yeah, this was fucking magical and beautiful. Actually, I'm going to go to the end of this because she says some cool shit right at the end. Jim's at the end in the uh, in the zigzag style. <laughs> Jim's at the end. The light is a gift. The bottom number. Another, and truly a connection to what I feel is my highest self to yeah us. and she hugs I uh, just uh, I'll give a link to this video but she hugged so many people and like so many different types of people and connected this is the beauty of it like connecting with so many different types of mentalities and people but I mean ultimately it's it's the heart <laughs> that we're feeling and reuniting with connecting and, uh, just, j actually, just watching this video, it, uh, I sent out so many fucking etherical hugs to people that, um, I normally would not have, absolutely, absolutely would not have, because I have, uh, certain engagements with, or I have certain feelings with, or I'm, I'm having to be around certain kinds of people who, uh, are very, uh, neglected deflecting the truth within them and they're projecting the bullcrap on others onto me so when I watch this and watch all this love I'm just I sent so much love out to these people and like I just, I just um, whenever I uh, etherically and mentally and um, internally hug people um, it, it's on the fucking real real people <laughs> because how I feel feel people is um, I make it fucking real. I, <laughs> I feel it. And whenever you feel something on that, on that fucking level, um, it becomes very fucking real. And you can experience this for yourself. Feel someone that you are, uh, have some, somewhat of a com communion or connection with. Feel them on a very deep level in meditation. See them clearly in your mind's eye. And you will hear from them very soon, probably the very next day, or if if not immediately. This has been my case every fucking time. So uh, whenever I watch this, I I sent everyone like just so many fucking hugs and and love. Uh, no matter no matter what I felt previously, if I was upset with them or upset with their actions or whatever, like, I don't give a fuck, dude. No, I I I just want to give you a love and, and a hug and, and an awareness that you're not alone. Whew, shit. You're not, you're not going through this alone, and uh, there's a lot of us right now going through this shit. So, I mean, um, even if I can't reflect that in the moment, whenever someone's projecting at me, uh, if they're fucking bullshit, like, later on, I, I meditate upon it, and I realize, like, these people need fucking love, dude. Like, they, they, need, they need a deep fucking hug and deep love. And they need to know that they're not alone, uh, what they're going through. <laughs> not by any means. Self that is the best version of myself. That to me is everything because for so long I was so lost and confused and <laughs> depressed and not understanding how to access exactly the feeling of connection that was missing from my life. Fuck. The lives that many people in our culture are suffering. They're suffering from feeling disconnected. They're suffering from anxiety and depression and all sorts of this issues that all really stem from feeling disconnected to this oneness. What I found through these practices, whether or not they work for everyone, I don't know. 
you know, at least for me and at least for the people here and why we're here is that we found that they work to build that connection between our truest self, the nature of our own heart and each other and being able to see each other in that truth. We consciously decide as individuals towards that path of love, towards that path of connection and perhaps it's possible to really thrive together and I think that maybe that's the reason why we're here. I mean, what, what else are we doing if it's not to come together and really create the most magnificent world possible? And maybe it's part of our evolution to do so. And maybe this community is just part of the acceleration of that evolution. I have to pee really, really bad. <laughs> I'm probably going to have to bizounce right now. Bizounce! I want to remind you that you have the power to thrive and you have the power to live oh your best life ever. This life is a gift. It exists here and now in this moment and only in this moment. And every moment is an opportunity for oh joy, for gratitude, for love. No matter what the circumstances, we have that choice available to us. And the more that you choose that, the more you attract that. And Bam! I just want to remind you of that, that that exists for you. And this is a space that I hope this channel can be of uh, inspiration and empowerment for you to realize that within your own heart. So I'm here to support you on this journey. Please leave a comment about what you thought. Are you fucking kidding me? Dude, like, this, this girl is fucking went into the Wim Hof. She went into this shit. Like, holy mother fuck. Dude, please support this girl. If you, if you see this video, please fucking support this fucking girl. Support her channel. Support what she's about, which is what, uh, what it's all about, baby. This is uh, fucking next level integration right here. <laughs> if you watch this video and you don't, you don't have any heartstrings pulled, well, that should fucking tell you something that you have a lot of uh, shit that you need to uh, deal with. Cause uh, there's so much fucking love here. integrate feel this is this is what it's all about people you don't even necessarily need to go without to seek this like the communion really roots down and happens essentially firstly within it happens first within and then a lot of times, uh, actually, a lot of times we don't realize that it's happening within, firstly. And that's because of the indoctrination system. We're not taught to go within. We're not taught to feel the things inside of us. We're not encouraged to do engage these things. So a lot of times, um, these things happening on the outside, and uh, they're, they're beautiful, and they're magical, and mystical, but they're stemming from within, and this is where we need to realize and regain, recog the recognition of what's happening, where it's stemming from. It's stemming from the essence, the, or, the origin point, which is you, which is all of us. It starts from within, people. Access. The beauty and the grace and the flow within you, and you will experience it on the outside. The reflection, experience the beauty. <laughs> ah, yes, feel it and be it. Peace.